Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Friday, March 11th. So our job canceled for today. I was actually on a zoom call with my boss yesterday about um, new software we're going to be using for managing the details of a job. And it was about, I want to say 4, 15, 4, 30. She's like, oh my God, tomorrow just canceled. I'm like, no, like we have had so many jobs cancel recently. And because they cancel so late in the day, uh, sometimes it's hard to get another one. So yeah, um, I try to, I'm a firm believer in that things happen for a reason. You know, this is the nature of the industry. So I'm like, okay. So Bill and I had dinner. We had spaghetti. Yummy. Had spaghetti. Watched some TV. Um, I could not fall asleep last night. I went downstairs at, you know, tucked Bill in, went downstairs at like 8.30. I was wide awake still at 11 and then had trouble getting up this morning. So um, I had an interesting little turn of events, though, for our team for work. So... How we normally run things is we have three scopists and a proofreader. And then I try to have a backup or two in case somebody needs off or two people need off on the same day or something like that. Last week, one of our team members said, you know, we had been slow for a couple weeks. One of our team members said, look, I have a chance to take a two week arbitration. I have to do it. Okay, so I found a backup. Our backup was available. Well, today, the team member contacts me and says, I have a chance for a month-long arbitration in April. And right there, I, I just, just made a decision. I said, okay, I said, would you rather be a backup? Because um, I was considering asking the backup do you want to be our permanent third scopist? And um, I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, and so that all transpired within a matter of like two minutes because I messaged the backup and she was like, yeah, I would love to. And I was like, great. So um, kind of switched things around. So then I had to let my boss know. And I let our other team member know what was happening. And I actually am in contact with someone who is going to be another backup because we need more than one backup. So it's just, it's so hard to find good, reliable people. Our job is hard enough. I need to not have stress and anxiety about finding coverage. Yeah. So I'm hoping that's not starting until April 1st though, because after next week we have the arbitration the last two weeks of March and everyone is working on that. So, um, yeah. But we have nothing on the calendar for next week yet, which gives me pause because like I said, I try not to have, I try not to think of always being worried about money and things like that because I am of the mindset that if you constantly are thinking about lack in your life, that's what you're going to attract to it. But it is hard when we are, con when we are just hit one after another with things. So you know, we have put out money for Bill's boat and we have to put out, he has to get the bottom of the boat painted um, next week, actually. So we'll be putting out money for that. But remember I told you about his truck. So we thought it was the battery. He went and got a new battery that was about $150. For a whole week, truck started up fine. And then come this past Monday, he went out to do something and it wouldn't start. And it took a couple times. Now, his stepbrother works at Toyota because Bill has um, a Tundra, Toyota Tundra. And he said, no, you, you definitely need a new starter. And we're like, damn it, because that's like $1,300. So I said, well, we have it, so go ahead, do it. So we took his truck up to the shop, not yesterday, the day before. Last night, Toyota calls and is like, well, 
once we got in there because to, to change this to put a new starter in they have to take off like the whole front of the truck or some something like that and um come to find out there's an oil leak i mean bill's truck is te is 12 years old and it has 140,000 miles um what we wanted to do was have it last for another three years till the boats paid off because then when the boats paid off okay fine he go get a truck we can have a truck payment i mean everything nowadays is just so expensive that his truck payment will probably easily be 800 dollars a month i mean that's just insanity right so the guy's talking and I hear Bill say, well, I have to talk it over with my wife. And I'm like, oh no, like it's something major. So he gets off the phone and he's like, well, there's an oil leak. There's something else that needs to be replaced. And you know, things like that happen when you start to look at something else. And like I said, his truck is old. He said, it's going to cost, get ready. It's going to cost $4,300. I about fell over. He said, so it's either that or I'm going to get a new truck. And I'm like, well, I don't want to have another $800 a month payment for five years or whatever. Not yet anyway. And um, so I said, well, I think you need to do it. And then after that, if the truck starts nickel and diamond us, then you're going to have to go get a new truck. So what we are doing we're putting it on a credit card because we have a credit card that has a high limit and has a zero balance. And then when he sells the boat, he sells his old boat in like two months, we're going to pay it off. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm glad I've ordered my fabric and ordered my patterns because I seriously am going to have to tighten the belt. There's, there's no two ways about it, at least for a little bit to get us back because it's just, it's like everything has just hit all at once. So, um, yeah, car repairs, no joke. Um, so he's had my car for the past two days, taking it to work. So I've had no vehicle, not that I've been going anywhere. Um, but his truck probably isn't going to be ready until next Wednesday. So we're going to have, he's going to take my car, um, for half of next week. And, uh, Yeah. I have a hair appointment tomorrow and I know I probably should not be spending money on that, but he would tell me to go do it because it's been nine weeks. I only go every two months. So it's just like, damn it. So let's get on to more positive, better things, right? Okay. So stitching, I did do a tiny bit of stitching yesterday. I got done the pink on her sleeve and I went to stitch the, I started, I was going to start stitching her arm and I just haven't yet. So I'll do that today when I'm done this video. Cause I've, I did my nails. I, I baked cookies. Like I've done some stuff. Yes, I know. I, I'm not a baker. We bought these Godiva cookies that have ganache in the center at Costco and we, it comes with two trays. So I put the other tray. It, I didn't have to mix up anything. I literally heated up the oven and put the cookies in. So someone had suggested, remember I was talking about the white on her dress. Someone had suggested to use, um, whisper, which makes it like fuzzy. I, I don't have any of that either. And I'm really trying to not purchase stuff, even little stuff like that because it adds up. Just like, here's an example. So normally we would go out to dinner on Friday and Saturday night. We're not going out tonight. He said, why don't we just cook at home? So we're having just chicken. And I'm like, yeah, we, we need to start. There's ways for us to tighten the spending without it being too much of a hardship, you know? And he's like, uh, he needs um, something at Costco, toothbrushes, something that he gets there. And he says, well, I need to go to Costco tomorrow. And I said, okay, we are going to get a Costco pizza for dinner. It's $10. So we're going to do that tomorrow. And I told him, I said, we literally just need to walk in and get your item and come out, not walk around the whole store, because that's when we wind up spending like $300 on stuff that we don't need. I mean, when you really stop and think about what you really need, don't need half the shit I buy, right? 
yeah. And I'm so glad I'm doing the junk journal because I have so much scrapbook stuff that it is, I could literally go all year and not buy fabric because I have a shit ton of fabric now. And I, I belong to two fabric of the month clubs. Um, but yeah, I could go all year and probably not buy anything. That'd be a nice little goal for the rest of the year, right? Okay. I did get, oh, I have a funny little story about Bill. So we went to the grocery store the other day, Wednesday, after we dropped off his truck, we went to the grocery store to get lettuce and tomato because we were having BLTs for dinner. He wanted pickles, like spears. So he picks up a jar and I'm not looking at the jar. Pick your own fucking pickles out, right? So we get home. He makes dinner. He's like, do you want a pickle with the BLT? Fine, great, okay. We, we're sitting downstairs. I take a bite of the pickle and I think to myself, oh shit, that was hot, like spicy hot. And I took another bite and I said to him, um, the pickle's hot. He's like, oh no, he's very sensitive to hot stuff. So come to find out when we cleaned up dinner, we pull out the jar. He bought jalapeno pickles. Are you kidding me right now? Like he did not read. He, so he took them to work. He took them to work because we're not going to eat them. And I was dying. I was just dying. Like you, you didn't read. No, he did not. He did not read the jar. Yeah. So there was that little tidbit. And yesterday in the mail, I got my um, cross stitch kit. Okay. So remember... This is the first thing I've ever stitched, right? It's hideous. <laughs> um, this was about 40 years ago. I stitched this for my grandparents. I thought, now this is like a, a refrigerator magnet. I thought that you do the back stitch first because then I would know where to, it would give me the outline for the stitches. This was the first thing I've ever stitched ever. My grandparents, the lovely people that they were, they kept it on their refrigerator literally 40 years. So when they passed and we cleaned out the house, I took it because are you kidding me? And someone said, one of my subscribers had suggested, you should try to find that kit and restitch it. I found it on eBay. I paid $6.99 for it. So you can see $1.99 is the price tag. And the woman said she bought it 40 years ago. I, how do you, how do you have something for 40 years? I mean, it's not even opened. So we're going to open it because I want to see it's made by cross my heart and it comes with DMC floss needle, plastic magnet and complete instructions. I wanted to see because the, I think the ADA is not 14 count. And for my first project, let's go. Right? So I told Bill, I said, the kit is so old that I might have to use different Ada or floss. Oh boy. Okay, here's the floss. What's nice is that they actually give you the colors. And I think I'm even going to use it. Well, look, there's like rust spots on the Ada. I don't know what that's from. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to use that to stitch it. Um, I'm wondering if it tells you it's 18 count Ada. My first project I was stitching on 18 count. What? Are you kidding me right now? 18 count. So, well, and look at the needle. Oh my God. It like, oh my God, I can't pull it out of the fabric. It's like rusted into the fabric. Look at that. Look, I try to pull it out and I can't. It's like stuck. It literally is stuck. Okay. This is still nice and intact though. But um, I actually think I'm going to save this and maybe do a, something else. Because I'm going to put this in my junk journal. I'm going to take this out. Dude, put this. Stitch it again. 40 some years later, 40 years later, and show how I can really stitch something, how much I've improved, and then journal about, you know, my grandparents and the refrigerator and 
the whole reason you buy it, of course, I bought it is because of the pattern. Because, yeah, what's nice is, I mean, here it gives you French knots. Get the fuck out of here with that. French knots for the eyes. No, that's not happening. And I can't imagine. I mean, look, did I really do a French knot? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> the approximate finish size is two by two. It is only 37 stitches wide by 37 stitches high. And the pattern looks hand drawn. Look at it. I could show it. I don't care. Yeah. So, um, but boy, they gave instructions on the back. I wonder if as an eight year old, did I read that? I don't know. Let's see what the instructions say. They want you to find the center. They show you how to stitch back stitch. Yeah. There's no way I read this because it would say back stitch after. Yeah, there's no way in hell. So what I'm going to probably do too is I'm going to copy this because I am going to add this to the journal page. I'm going to try to find a journal page that has a pocket so I can slip this in the pocket, the original pattern, because boy, that's a relic, let me tell you along with this. Um, and that's the great thing about the junk journals is that I'll be able to literally add so much to my cross stitch projects that I don't do just by framing them. So, and this definitely has a story. Um, I'm so glad that they give you the DMC colors because, um, I'm just going to use my DMC and I have cream colored 18 count Ada. But isn't that funny, though, that it's rusted into <laughs> the fabric? We'll throw that right in the trash. And the floss. But yeah, like I said, I'll keep this because who knows? Maybe I'll find something small I want to make a magnet of. But yeah, so after I get done, the coffee piece, the teacup, the next page is the flower. So we got to talk about that because... After thinking long and hard yesterday, I decided, and someone had suggested it, and I had been thinking about it, of stitching a sunflower for Ukraine. And I'm like, that's perfect, because that would be definitely be something to journal and remember years down the road. So I actually went online, and now I already have a sunflower pattern, so I'm going to show you. But I wanted to journal like some details about the war, like why it's happening. So I went online and did some research and printed out some like how it started, what's going on. So I'm either going to cut it out and just, or I'm going to journal it depending on what page. Because I remember if I remember correctly, there's a whole page on the back that I can journal. So I'll probably just jot down some notes about it. But here is the pattern that I'm going to stitch. And I also made a decision to support Ukraine a little bit by buying some patterns from um, an Etsy seller. So here is I don't think I put it in my markup yet. Okay, here is the pattern. It's gorgeous. Oh, why did it do that? Oh, let me save it to mark up and then I can. Here is the pattern. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely love that. Now, um, this is kind of big. It is going to take up the whole page on it's seven by seven on 14 count so I did the math it will be like let me say yeah it's 93 by 96 so on 18 count it's gonna take up pretty much that page because I only have like five and a half man I hope that I don't have a calculator right here but let's think 18 into 90 
is like five. It's five. So I'll definitely have enough. It'll, if I prop, I might not be able to mat it with any paper, but I will be able to stitch it. And it has five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13 colors. So there's only 12 slots in here. So one of my, um, cause I think I'm going to use DMC. I don't know. I might use Salky. I'll have to go see if I can up. I always pull the DMC first and then see if I want to use Salky. I might use Salky. If so, I can use my little spool organizer thing. And the pattern is by Sweet Annette. That is who, I will link it down below. But isn't it so gorgeous? And what's nice is, I mean, it's going to take me a while. What's nice is, though, each petal is like the same colors. So, and they, in the pattern, they give one, what is happening here? They give a page that has the back stitch and they give a page without the back stitch because I like to work with the page that doesn't have the back stitch because I do the back stitch at the end. So, um, yeah, I look very much forward to stitching that. And I mean, they stitched it just on plain white, so I can definitely use a light colored fabric because look at the colors. Gorgeous. So that is my plan for that. And then the patterns that I purchased were from Stitchy Princess on Etsy. And I actually spent $30. So let me show you the ones that I bought. I bought this one, which is Mermaid. I absolutely love that. Now, I bought these thinking I could take little elements and stitch some of the elements, not have to stitch the whole thing. Like, I would love to stitch the mermaid and maybe, like, the little castle down there or the octopus and make, you know, a scrapbook layout. I mean, a, you know, in my junk journal. So, I bought that one. I mean, let me tell you, I bought like five patterns because she's having a sale actually. So I bought that one and then I also bought this bunny one and Helen, Helen D is stitching this. Isn't it so cute? I love the bunny up against the egg, like the bunny up against the egg with one of those carrots. That would be a good, and even this little guy down here that looks like he's running and then some eggs. I love, I love this pattern very much. So I got that one too. And then I got three, four more. I got this one. I really loved the fairy. Don't you love that? I will link um, her Etsy store down below. There are many Ukraine designers out there. And then, of course, I had to get one of her fox patterns because she has a couple of those. I can, I'm, I'm imagining myself stitching these little foxes and just doing like a junk journal page of the little foxes. I mean, look at the one that's sleeping in the middle. Can you even right now? Yeah. Love that one. I love that fabric, too, that it's stitched on. Believe it or not, when I pick fabric for a pattern, I do look at what they stitched what color fabric they stitch it on. Then I got this one too, Flower Fairy. This is gorgeous. Look at the fairy. Like, oh my God. I absolutely love the aesthetic of that. Like stitching the fairy and then stitch like one of the little flowers or something with it. And you know, the thing too about the junk journal is that there doesn't always have to be like a concrete reason behind why you're stitching something. She's beautiful. I like her. It can be something as simple as that. It can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't, there doesn't have to be rhyme or reason to it. And then the last one I bought was another Easter one. I just died. Look at this. So it's like a husband and wife. Look at them sitting at the table and the waiter with the eggs. 
That's what I would stitch. I absolutely love that. I'm like, I have to stitch that. Have to. It's so cool. I just, I just love that so much. So that is the plan for the flower page. Um, I appreciate, I thanked Brandon for his efforts in finding me the stitch count of that rose for Mary Morgan's. Um, and luckily, you know, I made notes in there. I didn't like journal anything yet. Um, yeah. Okay. Talking point. We've had some talking points already, but okay, let's talk about Wordle for a second because it took me four tries to get today's word, and most of the time it takes me four tries, it seems. Now, someone posted this in one of the Wordle groups I belong to, and it made sense. And I told Bill that this is definitely a strategy. So this is they said, this is how I avoid wasting lines when there are too many possibilities. Line four was for testing the first letter, and there were five possibilities, so I put in a word that had four of them. So if you look, the first guess, they had one letter. The second guess, they had a letter. The third guess, they had four letters in the correct spot. Now, I'm not going to say what today's word was, but there are a lot of possibilities for that first letter. So in their next word... They picked a word that had like four of those possibilities and it gave them the other letter, I'm guessing, or it eliminated a bunch of them and then they got it on the last try. Bill doesn't agree with that strategy. He said, you're wasting a guess. Technically, yes. I mean, and let's face it, this game, it's a crapshoot. It's a complete crapshoot because especially the first word. Yeah. I was like, that's not a bad strategy though. And I wanted to congratulate Fabrics by Stephanie. She is celebrating 10 years in the cross-stitch community, 10 years of dyeing fabric. I love her fabric. Um, she has some really fantastic colors. So congratulations on that, Stephanie. That's fantastic. We all love, or I know I do, I love her fabric. Okay, so I feel like we can all relate to this next little thing. Someone posted in the Diamond Art Club VIP group, this person, Odette, loves her dog and hates her dog. She said, thankfully, the drills and canvases are okay. One toolkit was damaged. Her dog, like, went to town and chewed up the boxes. No, puppy, no. I remember, uh, this is many years ago, when I stitched downstairs, had my stitching stand down there. And, God, my stepdaughter... It was when we were going, we would take a, a week vacation to Ocean City every summer. And we had two dogs then, so we would have our neighbor across the street come and take care of them. Well, she had messaged Bill and was like, one of the dogs got into um, the thread. I had, like, was stitching with silk. Dog had torn it all up, chewed it up, knotted it up, had to throw the whole thing in the trash. And it was a good bit of silk. And I was just like, I blame myself. I blamed myself. I shouldn't have left it there on the end table where the dog could get it. Yeah. But I think we all kind of have a story like that. And then this last little talking point. I saw this on one of my book groups. And this is called Becca's Blind Date Books. You can customize... A box for someone. And I can't click on the pictures. You can customize a box of books with like, if they like coffee or cocoa, but the books are all wrapped. And it's like a gift basket of books. Can you imagine? So if you're interested in doing that for someone, it is called Becca's Blind Date Books. If I remember, I will link it in the description box below. I'm like, Oh my God, that would be fantastic. So how does it work? It says, she said, select any book from our inventory. And the fun part is you don't know what you're getting until it arrives. Books are covered, but you do get a hint about genre and length. Every book comes with free shipping, a free bookmark, and either a cup of cider, hot cocoa, herbal tea, or a coffee pod. 
Kids books come with a bookmark they can color in either cider or hot cocoa. And the books are not new. They have been rescued from attics, garages, thrift stores. That's cool though. I like that. Very, very cool. And you can subscribe to it and get a monthly theme box if you really want it for $25. Now, if you, um, there are different choices because one person got like, I want to say psychological thriller. Someone got it for her as a gift. It was so cool. Okay. OMG moments. Now remember, I also have joined a paint by numbers. Well, that's not a paint by numbers um, Facebook group. So you're going to see some paint by numbers because holy hell. Okay, so, but this first one is a stitching, it's a Heaven and Earth Designs, um, a stitching shelf by Amy Stewart, and Denise Lewis is the stitcher. She is stitching in hand. Wait till you see how long, how large this piece of fabric is. On 20 count linen Ada with one thread and full crosses. Look at this! Look at that! Look at her holding it up. I mean, she must sit with it like in her lap as like fabric, as a blanket, but oh my God, is that not stunning? 20 count, one over one. Holy shit. I was just like, and here, I'm going to scan in closer so you can see the detail. I mean, what? Yeah. I can't. I can't with that. Amazing. Okay. The next one is a paint by numbers, and this is by Linda Evans, and it's Notre Dame. It took her three months and 128 hours. Now, everyone seems like in this group loves shipper. Is that how you pronounce it? S-C-H-I-P-P-E-R. I mean, look at this. They painted that. I can't. I couldn't stop looking at it. It looks like a picture. I mean, look at the detail. Let me get in closer. Look at the detail in it. I mean, are you kidding me right now? Yeah, the one that Joanne painted me, I love it. I'll keep that forever. It's amazing. And she said she had to go over that three times to get the coverage. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's another um, paint by numbers. This is by Hillary Campbell and is... Paintworks by Dimensions Peony Floral. Again, I'm just like blown blown away. I mean, let's get in a little closer. I mean, look at that. Just gorgeous. I mean, I'm sorry. No one's going to tell me that a paint by numbers, even though you're following where to put the paint, it's like a diamond painting, that it's not art. It is. It still takes time. Okay, here's another paint by numbers by Dory. Now, I don't know the brand or anything, but I just loved this scene. I want to live here. Look at the, I love, my favorite part is the glow of that lamp on the trees. Look at that. I mean, to see that come together must just be fantastic. Okay, now we got some cross stitch. The rest are cross stitch and they're amazing. This is probably one of my favorite cross stitch pieces I've ever seen. I belong to a group called Mirabilia Nora Corbett Full Conversion. So people convert the patterns. Deanna Maximo, that name sounds familiar. Like I've been in contact with her through Instagram or something. She stitched her she changed Bianca Bella into a snow white version it says in collaboration with Nora 
Where do you see it? Can I? You're going to die. Look at it. Oh! I cannot. What? I mean, the dress. The little bunny at the bottom. But the dress. I mean, what a fantastic adaptation. Are you serious right now? And then she had another picture. She had a closer up picture of her face because it looks like the skin is done over one. Oh, I, I fucking can't. Yeah. Look, the skin is, is over one. Ah, I love the ribbon in her hair too. Can you even? My God. Wow. Stunning. Okay. Then I have some, I also belong to the Long Dog Samplers group because I love, even though I'll never stitch these things, I love to see them. So Nancy, this only took her 40 days. I don't know what this one's called, but this is quite, quite the stitching in 40 days. Gorgeous. I love the pops of red. And obviously she did her initials in red. You can see the N and the U. Is that a bunny up there? I don't know. It's some little creature by the sea up there. Gorgeous. Okay, here's another long dog sampler. This is by Corin. Uh, she started this September of 2021 and finished it last night. Uh, just again, just long dog samplers. These are stunning. Now I don't know fabric count or anything, but look at this. My God, I am just blown away by these types of patterns, the detail in it. Stunning. I have two more to show you. Enjoy these longer videos now because when I have the arbitration the last two weeks, they're probably going to be short little snippets. <laughs> okay. One more long dog samplers. This is by Becky Timewell. And she said lots of extra top stitching because I love the effect. What does that mean? Like she stitched over stitches. I don't, I don't know if that's what she means, but what drew me to this one is the colors in it. Look at that. <gasps> I love the red one down here. The horse. My God. What a gorgeous piece of needlework. And the last one I'm going to show you, I had to go in and like enlarge it. Okay, so this is in the group Snarky and Modern Embroidery. This is by Lucy Simpson. And she said, I finally finished my fish bottle. It's taken ages and I'm not entirely happy with it, but I do like the base of the bottle. So I'm going to show you. This is with thread. I'm going to show you a closer up picture because she has more pictures in here. Okay. I was blown away. Look at that. That's done with thread. Floss. What? <laughs> and then you can really, you can really tell if you look in the center of it that you can see. But how do you even do that? I don't even know how you do that. And then here's one more picture. I mean, what? I'm blown away. Blown away by stuff like that. The creativity of people in our community. Unbelievable. Okay. I was going to do a true crime story, but given that this video is already 40 minutes, I'm just going to do a motivational story. Maybe we'll do the true crime story tomorrow. I just find so much stuff when I go looking on Facebook to share with you guys that it just blows my mind. And how many times have I said that in this video? A lot. Okay. Yeah, we'll do true crime tomorrow. Okay, inspirational story. This is called... A hall of mirrors and I glanced over this story so a long time ago there was a great Shah 
he ordered to build a beautiful palace which had many wonderful things in it. Among other curiosities in the palace, there was a hall where all the walls, the ceiling, the door, and even the floor were made of mirrors. Freaky. The mirrors were so clear and smooth that visitors didn't understand at first that there was a mirror in front of them so accurately the mirrors would reflect the objects. Moreover, the walls of this hall were made in a way that they created an extraordinary extraordinary increased echo. One time, a dog ran into the hall and froze in surprise in the middle of it. A whole pack of dogs surrounded it from all sides, from above and below. Just in case, the dog bared his teeth and all the reflections responded to it in the same way. Oh boy. Obviously, we know the dog is seeing his own reflection multiplied by however many times. So frightened, the dog frantically barked and in return, the echo imitated the bark and increased it many times. The dog barked even harder and the echo was keeping up. The dog tossed from one side to another, biting the air, and his reflections also tossed around, snapping their teeth. In the morning, the guards found the miserable dog, lifeless and surrounded by a million reflections of lifeless dogs. There was nobody who would make any harm to the dog. The dog died by fighting with his own reflection. So, the moral of the story the world does not bring good or evil on its own. Everything that is happening around us is the reflection of our own thoughts, feelings, wishes, and actions. The world is a big mirror. Strike a good pose. Smile from deep within. Life is beautiful. Stay positive. And you know, it, it's true. I mean, we never see ourselves, I feel like, how other people see us. Um, I feel like we are our own worst critics and other people may see us as beautiful or whatever and we don't ever see ourselves that way. So maybe that needs to change, right? Easier said than done, I know. Okay. So. Do, 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 do. I don't know why I did that. How are we going to continue to unfuck ourselves this year? Oh, that was a good rip. Did you hear that? It was crisp. <laughs> oh, this is a long one. Okay. We are subconsciously hardwired for safety. Seen in the way we automatically do the same predictable things in the same predictable ways over and over and over while regularly and consciously yearning for something new, something different. Okay, we can unpack that one a little bit. I feel like in order so that our brains don't explode on a daily basis, you have to have a lot of automatic things done in your day. Like every morning I get up, I do the wordle, I put in laundry, I'll run the dishwasher, I make tea, I sit down, I'll do the banking, like those kinds of things. You have to have things in your brain that you don't think about and that are somewhat automatic because otherwise I think we would all go insane, right? Yeah. Um, where the yearning for something new and something different comes, that's why I like the fact that I read and the fact that I do needlework and crafting because that is where I can be different. Um, you can also be different in makeup, hairstyle, clothing. I mean, yeah, you have to have things um, that are routine. You would lose your mind every single day. If you just, if everything was just always chaos and up in the air and you didn't know, you have to have it. You have to. So I agree with that, but on another level, I don't agree with it. I also feel like you have to open yourself up to opportunity. And, you know, I'm my own worst person as far as that's concerned. Like, here's a good example. In the summer, which summer is my least favorite season. I don't like shorts. Um, I don't like wearing a bathing suit. I'm not a water person. It's too hot. There's bugs. Like, I could really go on and on. 
However, in the summer, one of my husband's best friends, they have a house, they have a pool, and they are over there partying every weekend. Now, we are invited every weekend. We do not go every weekend because I can't. Um, but on the times that we do go, it's like I sort of dread it. And I mean, I've known these people since I've been with Bill. So I've known these people for 13 years. Um, and they're all welcoming. They're all wonderful. They uh, truly, truly wonderful, kind people. But it's just the thing of being social. And it's fucking hot as fuck usually when we're there. And, but in, but this summer, I really want to try to take it when we're invited as an opportunity, an opportunity to kind of spread my social wings maybe, or just be able to go and enjoy myself. Um, and I've been toying with the idea because literally in the summer, I will wear jeans all year round because I'm in the house most of the time. I have capri pants, but I told Bill, I said, I need something that's not shorts that when we go over there and it's fucking 95 degrees, which it has been really hot some of the time because we're going in July and August, I need something that I'm comfortable in wearing, but that I feel that looks good too. So I've been looking at summer dresses, believe it or not. Ones that aren't like maxi because I have a bunch of those. Ones that are like just below my knee. So I have a dress that I've actually saved on Amazon. It's like 35 bucks though. And I'm going to wait, but it looks really pretty. And it's kind of, I don't want to say gauzy, but I, I need to find something that I can wear in those instances and be comfortable with. So, but that was a really long roundabout way to say, Leave yourself open to opportunity sometimes with stuff instead of automatically your default being, no, I don't want to do that, say that, go there, whatever. Like I said, I need to take my own advice. So I hope you guys all have a great Friday. Um, my video probably will be somewhat late tomorrow only because I have a hair appointment and then I'm grabbing lunch for Bill and I and then we're going to Costco. So I'm not probably even going to be home until like, two, three o'clock, but I'll do my video then. So as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.